take a deep breath in. And as you breathe in, breathe in that resourceful feeling of relaxation. And as you exhale, just allow feelings of stress, tension or worry to leave your body in your outward breath. Breathing in and breathing out. And if it's safe to do so, allow your eyelids to close. And as they close, allow your mind to take you to a safe place. The safe place may be a memory. Or it may be an idea. Or as you breathe in and breathe out, it may just be an acknowledgement that right here and right now you are safe. As you breathe in and breathe out, I want you to picture the faces of those people that throughout your life you've loved the most. Those people that impacted your life in some way. And it doesn't just have to be people. It can even be a pet dog. I just want you to imagine that in this safe, comfortable place, you are surrounded by the people that you love and they love you. And I want you to notice that here in this place, you feel at peace. You feel centered. You feel connected to yourself, but also to people around you. As you continue to breathe in and breathe out, feeling a wonderful and powerful feeling of resourcefulness. And resourcefulness is just feeling that you have access to whatever you need. Maybe that is self-acceptance. Maybe that is inner strength. Maybe that is discipline, self-control. But it could also be creativity. Breathe in and breathe out and just get a sense that it feels like it's time to make a change. As you look back through your life, you can see that certain things led to a chain reaction, led to other things. And I want you to realize that When you think about your health, what's the thing that time and time again has caused destruction? At a cellular level, at a tissue level, I want you to get a sense that one thing more than anything else has proven to be destructive. And sometimes we will do more for other people than we will ever do for ourselves. If a man was standing in front of a burning house, they wouldn't dream of running into that burning building. But if they had a child in that room, in that burning house, it would take a small army to stop that person running into that house. No matter the damage, the risks to themselves, they would go into that burning building to do whatever it takes to get their child into a place of safety. 
So as you breathe in and breathe out, I want you to find that place within yourself that you would do more for other people than you would do for yourself. What sacrifices would you make? What adjustments? What decisions? And I want you to imagine here in this place, you were able to drift inwards into your own imagination. And imagine a future time where you have a desire for cocaine. But I want something to change this time. Of all the people that you love, or perhaps love you, I want you to imagine the strongest connection, the most intense love, is just there to observe. I want that person to observe you as maybe you evaluate a feeling of boredom of low energy a craving an urge of some kind and maybe you see see yourself looking through numbers in a mobile phone but I want you to see that person that you love the most watching you maybe even asking what you're doing and I want you to Look at this through the framework of radical transparency and brutal honesty. Tell that person you love the most that you're contacting a dealer to get some cocaine. And then imagine a naive voice asking, what is that? And I want you to imagine how you would explain as if you were talking to a small child what cocaine is and why you would even want it. Maybe you can see a confused face. And I want you to get a sense then when that person that you love the most asks what has been the consequence of the cocaine use so far. I want you to imagine they're in the room right next to you and tell them everything that it's cost you. What it's done to your health, how much money has been put into this drug. The chain reaction that led to traumas and stress the disappointments, the letdowns, the recklessness, the come downs. Imagine being radically honest and explaining all the damage that has been done. But for the sake of your imagination, I want you to imagine that you still continue to maybe message that dealer. And before long, they're there. And I want you to see them observe you as perhaps you pay for however much quantity you've borne. And then I want you to imagine that they are also there when you're using it. Imagine the facial expression, their eyes, and maybe because you've explained all of the destruction, all of the pain, all of the consequences, maybe they're really concerned for you, and they seem visibly upset as they see you use this white powder. And then I want you to imagine you're now under the influence, but doing it in front of this person that you love the most. Maybe you're acting differently. And I want you to notice that they're seeing you act differently. Maybe it's an intensity. 
Maybe it's the speed at which you talk. Maybe it's movements that become more frantic. But I want you to see that they are seeing you as a user. And then I want you to see you do the things that you tend to do while you're under the influence. Something that you would never do if they were there, but you tend to do when they're not. And I want you to imagine they're watching that. Until there is a growing sense that enough is enough. That eventually the straw does break the camel's back. That you pass the point of threshold where you're done. It's the past. And you will never touch it again. And I want you to imagine, just imagine that you've reached that point of threshold and that you've rewound to that same moment before it even happened, where your mind is open to new suggestions, new ideas, new ways of thinking that encourage you to consider alternatives. that your mind is opening up to new possibilities and healthier choices. I want you to release any cravings or desire for cocaine, knowing that it no longer serves a positive purpose in your life. That you finally recognize that cocaine is a temporary solution that only masks underlying needs and emotions. And that you are now committed to discovering alternative, healthier ways to fulfill your needs and find true satisfaction. And there'll be other things that don't do the same, but meet the underlying need. Maybe an underlying need for exhilaration or adventure could be go-karting. Maybe that sense of Gratification can come from good quality food. Maybe that stimulation for your mind can come from learning something new or doing a creative task. I want you to get a sense that there are alternatives and you are committed to exploring those alternatives. And that each day you cultivate new habits that support your physical and mental health, empowering yourself to make positive choices, channeling your energy into engaging activities and hobbies that bring you joy, fulfillment, and a real sense of purpose. Because for many years you've been chasing a synthetic, artificial high but you are capable of finding natural highs in life, experiencing genuine moments of happiness and contentment without the need for cocaine. Imagine that time is going by, maybe it's been a week or two weeks or three weeks without cocaine, and you're learning that you can deeply connect with your emotions to learn healthy ways to process and express them rather than the instinct to turn to drugs. And there are people that want to help you, and you will allow them to help you, allowing them to be part of your recovery. And sometimes what's needed to get through one identity into another identity is a vision for your future, And I want you to imagine that vision, a vision where you are a good dad, living a clean life, being a good example, having developed excellent coping strategies. See that vision for your future, filled with meaningful goals and always something to look forward to aspirations that inspire you 
to stay on that path that some people call sobriety? And how good would it feel to replace the urge to use cocaine with a renewed focus on personal growth, learning, expanding, skills, knowledge, or new experiences, new foods, new accomplishments. And whether it's through art or cooking or looking at nature or going for a walk or sometimes just being behind the wheel of a fast go-kart, I want you to get a sense that by practicing mindfulness, just being in the moment and living that moment fully, you're able to activate incredible self-awareness. And you've already started to recognize the triggers and negative patterns, and you found ways to work around them, and you're doing that more and more. So the need, or the perceived need, to use cocaine disappears because you now have choices. And from this point onwards, I want you to ask yourself a question. These things that you've been doing in private, would you do them if the people that love you the most, that would be the saddest if you were gone, were watching your choices and your behaviors? And I want you to get a sense that the shame is trying to keep you safe, but it also means you will experience incredible pride, satisfaction, a sense of fulfillment and personal growth when you find that cocaine isn't even doing what it was meant to do. I want you to imagine you're there in front of that person that you love the most and I want you to imagine that you are sneezing or coughing up blood and not small amounts, large amounts filling your hands if there's a tissue or a hanky it's drenched in blood and I want you to see that that person that loves you is so concerned wondering is is this the time that you die and when you hold that thought of a hand or a tissue dripping with blood it just cements this idea that Enough is enough. Imagine you're a cat with nine lives that's already used 13 of them. Now is the time to make a decision to move forward, to find those alternatives, to have three, four, five, six things that you could always do ahead of ordering or using that cocaine. And then I want you to go forward a year from now, a year in the future, and imagine how good it would be to have been free of this drug for a year. Imagine that you're around family members that are so relieved you're still alive. Imagine you're standing in front of a full-length mirror seeing how much healthier you look. And I want you to imagine you're doing something that you can only do the point where you've turned your life around and imagine doing that thing and feeling how good you would feel to have another chance at life feel that incredible feeling and accept that this is not a possibility but a destiny once you decide that enough is enough and that cocaine is something in your past and never in your present and never in your future And as you accept that to be true, return to the present, feeling a wonderful sense of relief, but also progress. Feeling like you've turned a corner, feeling that you will shortly awaken with a new identity. A non 
end user clean clean and free of this drug it's in your past never again you don't want it, need it and tap into that wonderful feeling you get from knowing that it's over for you this is now in your past take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes get a sense that you are fully in this moment and when I count from 1 to 10 you will awaken feeling resourceful, motivated happy and at peace but awakening as someone that will not use and does not use and that any use is simply in your past starting to count to awaken you one two three waking up four five six more alert seven eight open your eyes open your eyes nine ten wide awake wide awake wide awake